Hey, reef keepers, hobbyists, and um, reef fans. How's it going? It's Billy, your wild reef keeper. Today, I'm gonna be doing a little bit of maintenance on the tank. Um, I've been gone for two weeks, uh, just monitoring the tank from Neptune, and I've got an amazing um, tank friend who helps maintain this tank with me, who's been checking on that while I'm gone. Um, I also have my assistant in our office upstairs uh, daily, so I've got eyes on the tank, but it was really great to be able to monitor all of the, the water levels and, and all the things that the Neptune Apex system on this tank does. It's just truly amazing um, coming from uh, my old 120 gallon, which was completely manual. I was manually testing everything, um, which I still do once a week just to sanity check the machine, but this has been awesome. So let me get into what we're doing today. Um, I'm past my ugly phase. I'm actually running zero numbers. I, I did the Carlin Zuck system and um, I did that about four weeks ago and um, four or five weeks ago. Either way, um, the numbers are brilliant on this tank. Nitrate and phosphate are at zero. Phosphate, of course, should be uh, like 0.03. But anyways, I need to add some nitrate and phos in there. Um, but what we're gonna do today is focus on the hair algae in the tank. So I'm gonna go ahead and brush off all the rock. I'm gonna do some hydrogen peroxide to help that stop from reattaching to things. And then I'm going to suck out about 150 gallons to remove um, that a lot of that um, algae, the reef mats will do the rest and catch that in the sump. Um, and that's gonna help with the algae issue I'm having. This is a new tank, it's about three months old, typical to go through an ugly phase. Um, this is kind of a pretty ugly phase, I think, because my water is crystal clear. Um, you can see a little bit of that algae growth on the rock. I'll try an underwater shot here to show you that a little better. So um, what I've done to combat this is just, what I've done to combat this is, um, the first thing I do is really put animals in the tank that help. So we've added several urchins, um, different crabs, snails. Um, there's fish in there, tangs that are helping eat the algae. Um, I added a, um, I added a file fish in there because I had some hitchhiker aptasia from the old tank um, and that guy will help to eat kind of everything, help janitor up the tank.
All right, so I have spent about two hours scrubbing this tank. Here's where we're at. Um, I'm about to go check my water mixing downstairs and get ready to drain. All right, so I'm down here. I just um, did my final water test. I actually, I was going for 225 gallon water change. I put too much salt, so we're doing a 250 instead. Um, everything's mixing here. So just to give you a little insight into my setup, um, this is my mixing tank, and it's a foam bottom tank. Um, it's run by an L2, and the reason why it's an L2 is that um, right now I'm mixing, and then I shoot all of the water upstairs. Um, the tank is about, this is a 10 foot ceiling plus the subfloor, um, then over the sump. So that pump's pushing the water about 14 feet, um, give or take. Uh, so yeah, when it's not used as a mixing pump, I can send that water up. I have an M2 over here from my um, RO tank, and that adds the water over here to the chrome bottom. So that's my mixing station. I'm pretty much done uh, down here. So I'm gonna go up and start draining the tank. And um, I've also got a fish up there uh, that I've got to catch and it's going to be a sump fish. It's a pretty aggressive tang and he is beating the crap out of all the other tangs in there. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna go get started on that. Okay, so that was quite a full day of tank maintenance, but well worth it in my opinion anyway, but look who you're talking to. So um, today I've been combating green hair algae and I want to speak a little bit to that. Um, so with green hair algae, there's several environmental factors that will contribute to the green hair algae, mostly lighting and overfeeding like nitrate level, um, but you also want to pay attention to some other factors. So feeding one of the main factors. Um, check your feeding. Are you overfeeding? Most of us 
are. That's just how it works. Your nitrate level will show if you're overfeeding or not for your tank environment. Um, water chemistry. Water chemistry are your all around numbers, um, but for green hair algae, you're more focused on nitrate and phosphate, which phosphate should always be low, should always be like 0 0.03, 0 0.06. Um, but nitrate is the contributor, it's the food for the green hair algae. So you want to keep your nitrate level low. Speaking to those numbers, um, I've always been a low nutrient tank guy. My 120 gal was never over five um, on the nitrate. Uh, this is at zero right now. I highly recommend something like the Coral and Zucked um, system. Look it up on BRS. They have a great video on that. Um, I just ran that on this tank, which is helping me now um, with all the proper bacteria strains. Um, the tank is eating up the food and is maintaining um, a zero nitrate right now, and that's with, with feeding. Um, lighting is another huge factor. So what are your lights at? Do you par test your tank or just kind of go with it? Um, I par test, I have a par tester. Um, I know they're expensive, you can rent them as well um, to help gain access to one. But um, when I set my lighting programs, I par test to make sure they're all dialed in. Now, during an algae battle, I right now this tank is running 150 par at the top. Um, I didn't get a lower measurement, but it, a lower level in the tank measurement, but um, I have only Royal lights running and they're running at 150 par on the top of the tank. So at the bottom, they're probably like 50 par or less. I know it's not a lot, but um, for a week or so to help the animals that are in there catch up, um, the, it's a great idea to do like a no light day um, or whatnot. But um, the other contributing factor I found over the years is flow. In a low flow tank, you're gonna see more algae. I try to keep as high of a flow as my animals will take. I'm I have a predominantly LPS tank, so they don't tolerate direct um, current very well. So uh, yeah, check your flow. Um, I always make sure that I'm giving as much current as I can to not damage the animals inside of it. One trick that I've done over the years is um, with LPS coral, they close up at night. So I run heavier current at night than I do in the daytime, which I know is opposite of um, the ocean, but this isn't the ocean, this is a man-made environment. And I can clean up a lot of nooks and crannies by running higher current at night when it's not gonna damage the coral um, as much anyway, if at all. Uh, the other factor is temperature. So what's the temperature of your tank? Um, they say keep your tank at 75 to 80 degrees. Um, myself and some others have had luck keeping tanks below 75. All right, maximum 73, okay? Um, right now my tank is at 73 degrees and that's going to help um, the algae go away. It likes warmer temperatures. So if you're running an 80 degree tank and you're having a lot of algae problems, definitely, and over time, lower it a degree a day um, tops. If you want to do a degree every few days, um, I wouldn't drastically change it five degrees in one day. Um, you only want to move about one point on anything in any given day, 24 hour period. So keep that in mind. But um, that's just from experience um, of the last six, seven years uh, with the reef tank, um, what I've found to help green hair algae. If you start a new setup, you're going to go through an ugly phase. You're going to combat algae as you're trying to get your biology of your tank all settled in. Um, it's just part of the game, right? It's why we love it so much. But anyway, I hope this video and my experience with reef keeping can help somebody else out there. Um, feel free to leave comments or shoot me a question and DM. Um, it takes a village to run a reef tank and I'm so thankful for you guys, for my followers, for the conversations that are inspired from this page. Um, a lot of folks message me different things and I, I just always enjoy talking about the hobby. So thanks for continuing to follow. If you're not already subscribed, please subscribe to my channel, splash that subscribe button, um, like the video, please give me some uh, social media love, <laughs> love for the reef. So thanks again for watching my video and uh, I'll catch you next time.